If you play jazz or if you're studying jazz, then you're probably practicing also to improvise over chord progressions that are moving around through different keys and you wanna be free to move around the neck. So in this video, I'm going to go over three different exercises that I think are really solid way to either test or develop your ability and your fretboard knowledge in a very practical way. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. I'm going to cover this in three different levels, getting more and more complicated along the way. This is the kind of thing where you can actually approach it in a few different ways. You could say, well, I wanna do one key and then all positions and that way really make sure that I know everything I need all over the neck. Or you can also just take one position and then do all keys and that way cover a lot of ground. No matter what level you're at, this is the kind of exercise where you don't need to drill it for years but you can maybe just go through it once in a while and just see if there's an area of the neck or maybe there's a key that you kind of need but you also need to work a little bit on it. The first level is to know the basic material that you need. For each position of a scale that you want to play, then you also want to know the 2-5-1 in that key, and you want to know the arpeggios for the chords in the 2-5-1, and also the arpeggios from the third of those chords. If we take G major as an example, so let's say G major in this position, and then we have a 2-5-1, so that would be A minor, D7 to G major 7. So we need the basic arpeggios, so A minor, to D7, to G major 7. And the arpeggios from the third, so the third of A minor is C, so that's a C major 7. The third of D7 is F sharp, so that's an F sharp half diminished. And then the third of G major 7 is B, so that's a B minor 7. But that's of course just really an exercise and maybe not really telling you if you're free to improvise using this material. I think this part of it it's so simple that you can probably teach a monkey how to do it in all positions if you are a little bit patient. What you really wanna do is you wanna try and also improvise in the position and see how that feels and if that's difficult to do. And you probably don't wanna play the same 2-5-1 lick in all positions all the time, but maybe you wanna check. So for this one, let's say that I wanna play a line using the basic arpeggios on the 2-5-1 in this position. That could be something like this. Of course, I can do the same just using the arpeggio from the third, so. And when you're doing this, then don't try to play the same 2-5-1 lick in all positions and in all keys. Really just try and improvise because that's what you want to do. That's the point of this exercise. The second level is then to start altering the dominant in this basic cadence. And there are a few ways you can do this. In this video, I'm just gonna use really the altered sound, so, so melodic minor, but you can of course also just take a dominant from the harmonic minor scale and use that. It doesn't really matter too much. So let's just take the next position of G major, so. And of course, then the same goes, we need some arpeggios, some basic things to just measure what's going on. Let's uh, first go with. A minor seven for the two chord, then for the D seven altered. The arpeggios I'm gonna use here are actually from the tritone substitute because they work really well and they still kind of make sense as diatonic arpeggios in melodic minor. So that means that the first one will be A flat seven. And then for the G major seven, G major seven here. And then the arpeggio from the third is going to be C major seven for the A minor. And then for the D seven, I'm gonna use the one also from C, so that's a C half diminished arpeggio, which is of course the arpeggio from the third of the tritone substitute, so of A flat seven, down to B minor seven on the G major. And again, of course, the way you really wanna test this is that you wanna play some lines and just improvise with it and see how that feels. And if you're feeling stuck or if you can't move from one scale to the next or from one chord to the next, in a logical way. So just quickly to maybe elaborate a little bit on my arpeggio choices for the altered dominant. If we have D7 altered in this position, then that's this scale. And if I look at the diatonic arpeggios that I have in the scale, then from D, I have a D half diminished. From E flat, I have an E flat minor major. 
then I have an F minor seven, and then a G flat, or maybe it makes more sense to think of it as an F sharp, uh, major seven sharp five, and then an A flat seven, B flat seven, C half diminished, and then a D half diminished. Now I want to have some chords and some arpeggios that I can use that really sound like the chord, and my D half diminished, and the F minor seven that I have sort of on the diatonic root of the D seven and also the diatonic third, which is an F, where the third of the chord is actually an F sharp. They don't contain that F sharp, so I'm kind of missing that. So I need to find another way to get that sound across. Now this is a D seven, and the most important part of a D seven is of course the F sharp and the C. We actually have those in A flat seven. And that's why I'm using that one. And we also still have those in the aperture from the C, so the C half diminished, C and F sharp. So that's why I'm using those aperture's on the alto dominant. So the final level, we start adding another dominant, so another auxiliary or secondary dominant, so that we can turn it into a loop. So that means that we have the A minor seven, if we just stick with G major, to D seven altered, to G major seven, and then to an E seven altered. And that way we have a turnaround that can just loop and loop and loop as much as we need to practice. If we take this position of the G major scale, you can of course use the same idea for the E7 altered as you're using for the D7 altered. So that means that if we have the E7 altered, then the pitches that we're going to use are going to be the tritone substitutions of B flat seven, and then the one from the third of that one, or you can also consider it to be the seventh of the dominant, the also dominant, that's a D half diminished. So we have B flat seven and D half diminished. And in this position, then the arpeggios will be this. And from the third, And improvising on this could be something like this. If you want to check out sort of the main melodic concept that I use when I'm improvising over moving changes like this, and I think really also a strong way to improve the way that you play lines that are really pointing towards the next chord, then check out this video where I'm going over how to use target notes on a 2-5-1. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.